All right, kiddos, as promised, I, I'm going to give you a hand on some questions from assignment 25, and I'm not going to do it all, but I'm really going to give you a good head start. I mentioned in the last video I would try to fit it in that last video, but I went a bit long, so this comes obviously as a separate video. We'll call it a bonus video, maybe a like bonus material on a DVD or Blu-ray that you buy. This is bonus material today, extra stuff, and I, you know, this is how I feel about it. I'm not going to charge you a penny for this. It's free of charge. So this homework, this homework help, kiddos, put your wallets away. Don't bring me any checks. Don't bring me any money. Just leave it at home. This bad boy is on the house. So here we go. For assignment 25, you have 10 equations that I just ask you to balance. Now, I'm really nice to you because I give you the formulas for that equation. Pretty soon, I'm going to give you the names of the elements and compounds, and you're going to have to write the formulas yourself. So maybe as I go through this, I'll read it as it might be, or as it would be, excuse me, had I given you the names instead of the formulas. So this would be iron reacts with oxygen gas to form iron 3 oxide. So how are we going to balance this? Well, let's see. I have two irons on one side and none on the other. Three oxygens over here and two over there. Ugh. This one doesn't look very pretty. This might take a little work, and that's why I always encourage my students, use a pencil until you get really good at this. I'll, I'll show you why. You're going to end up scratching things out, and it, it just gets ugly and confusing. It's nice if you get to a point where nothing seems to be working, just erase all the coefficients and just start from ground zero. And it's much easier to do that, obviously, with a pencil than it is with a pen. Um, so let's see. Um, three and two. Uh, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and double uh, my product size. You know, that gives me six oxygens and four irons. And so I can put a four in front of Fe. That gives me my four irons. And a three in front of O2. That gives me the six oxygens. And I'm done. Pretty cool, isn't it? Now, Remember what I said, you can't add or change subscripts. So some students, and I'll see this on your papers tomorrow for the kids that don't watch this homework help video or weren't paying attention during class, they're going to put a 4 down here as a subscript. Don't do that. You can never add or change subscripts, folks. You can only add or change coefficients. So that would be a 4 to 3 to 2 mole ratio. Four irons react with three moles of oxygen gas to produce two moles of iron, three oxide. Now let's take a look at number two. Uh, two hydrogens, one, uh, two nitrogens, one, a uh, total of four oxygens. Uh, let's see, let's put a two here in front of HNO2. That at least gives me two hydrogens on both sides. Huh. Wow, I'll be darned. Two nitrogens, two nitrogens, four oxygens, three. Hey, that's done, isn't it? Just putting that two in front of HNO2 balances that equation. Let me give you another little hint here. If your coefficients started getting up in the double digits, you know, at this point, you're probably doing it wrong. Now, I'm not saying you can't balance uh, with coefficients that are, you know, 13 or 14 or 15. You definitely can, but, you know, just starting out, I'm not going to give you something that ugly. So if you start getting pretty big coefficients, you might want to stop, erase, and just start over again. Okay? Let's take a look at number three. Uh, iron, one and three. Two hydrogens, two hydrogens. Four oxygens and four oxygens. Huh. Uh, okay, well, the irons are easy to fix. Just put a three there. That gives me three irons on both sides. And I need four oxygens on the left side, so let's put a four in front of H2O. That gives me four oxygens, and now I need eight hydrogens, so put a four in front of H2. How does that look to you? Three irons on both sides. Eight hydrogens on both sides. And four. Hey, cool. We're done with that one. This isn't so bad, is it? Let me do another one for you. Number four. Uh, KClO3 makes KCl and O2. Well, the Ks are okay, and the chlorines are okay. Huh. I'm going to put a one and a half here in front of O2. Wouldn't one and a half times two give me three oxygens on this side, which is what I need? Now, on this assignment, and until I tell you differently, differently, I'd like you to balance with whole number coefficients. So let's double that and make that a 3. And for this to still balance, we're going to have to double the other coefficients. Okay? So it's a 2 to 2 to 3 ratio. By the way, if I were to have put this in words for you, it would have said potassium chlorate reacts to form potassium chloride and oxygen gas. So get used to hearing the names 
uh, and you're going to have to be writing formulas yourselves here in just a little while. Okay, number five, this will be the last one I do from that first section of homework for you, and then I'll do some from your textbook. We have aluminum metal reacting with lead to nitrate to form aluminum nitrate and lead metal. Okay, so let's see. Uh, this is where, do you see how the nitrates travel as a group? We can balance them as a group. There's three nitrates on this side and two on this side. And, of course, a multiple of three and two is six. So I'm going to put a three in front of the lead two nitrate to give me six nitrates on both sides, and a two in front of my aluminum nitrate to give me six nitrates on that side. It's two aluminum, so I'll put a two there, three leads, I'll put a three there. Ta-da! We're done with number five. Now, you guys have five more to do. You guys should be able to handle it. Look at how quickly we did those first five. Looks like it's under six minutes. So uh, you can get pretty good at this pretty fast. Okay, now, the rest of your homework comes from your textbook tonight. So if you're using the blue book, it's page 290. Ah, I'm going to get my fingers working here. Page 290, and the first one you need to do is number 13. So for number 13, it says balance the following equations. And letter A is H2 and Cl2 make HCl. Now, if I were to put this in words, I'd say hydrogen gas reacts with chlorine gas to form hydrogen chloride. Now, you might be wondering why there are subscripts 2s right after those elements. Do you guys remember the Brinkelhoff elements we talked about in class? Bromine, iodine, nitrogen, chlorine, hydrogen, oxygen, and fluorine. These are your diatomic elements. And whenever they're in their elemental state, they come in pairs. Alrighty? Now here they're not in their elemental state. Here hydrogen is bonded to chlorine, so it doesn't have to come in pairs. But when they're in their elemental state, all by their lonesomes, just hydrogen or chlorine, they have to come in pairs. Okay, to balance this one, we'll just put a 2 in front of HCl, and boom, letter A is done. Okay, for 13 there's also a letter B, and there's a letter C. You guys can handle the rest of that on your own. Now, number 14. I really like number 14. Kids seem to struggle with it, though. Let me, let me show you what you need to do. It starts out like this. It says Li plus O2 reacts to form, and then it says LiO2. Now, let me read the question to you, because sometimes kids think, oh, this is already balanced. I'm finished. One lithium, one lithium, two oxygens, two oxygens. No, you're not finished. The instructions say the following. Identify and correct the error in the following, and then balance. So there's an error in here somewhere. You have to find that error, and then you can balance the equation. So lithium is not diatomic, so that's okay. Li is just perfect for elemental lithium. Is oxygen one of my diatomic elements? Yeah, it is. It's the O in Brinkelhoff. So that's just fine. I think this is my problem. Yeah. Do you guys see it yet? You don't? Come on. You all know that lithium has a positive one charge. Isn't it an alkali metal? It's in group one. Lithium, kiddos, is positive one. And oxygen is in group 16. It's negative two. Do you see the problem yet? Yeah, that shouldn't be LiO2. Shouldn't that be li 2 Oh, yeah, that's the problem. So now we can balance it. So I need to have two lithiums on both sides. So I'm going to put, well, I'm not going to put a two there. Let's fix these oxygen. If I put a two in front of this, doesn't that give me two oxygens? Then I have four lithiums, so I'll put a four there. So it's four to one to two. Okay? Letter B. So letter B says you have H2 and Cl2 reacts to form H2Cl2. Once again, you're not done. It might look like it's balanced, but remember on number 14, they purposefully made a mistake somewhere, and you have to find it. So let's see, H2, is that one of my diatomics? Yeah, it's the H in Brinkelhoff. Cl2, yeah, that's the Cl. So it's okay that those two guys show up in pairs. But how about that? Is that the formula between H and Cl? H 
positive 1, Cl negative 1. Hey, that is not the right formula. Shouldn't it be HCl? Then the balance of, we'll just put a 2 in front of that, and we're done. Okay? Now, in number 14, there's also a C and a D. I'm not going to help you with those. You guys can do it yourself. I know you can. All right. And then the last one from your homework is number 15. Now, this time I give you the chemical equation in words. You have to write the formulas and balance it. Let me show you what I mean. 15A says aluminum reacts um, with oxygen. Um, to produce aluminum oxide. Okay, so there it is in words. You have to write out the equation and then balance it. So, let's see if we can do this together. What's the formula for aluminum? <laughs> Good job, it's Al. Is that diatomic? Is it one of these seven guys up here? Nope. So I don't need to put a 2 after it. It's just fine. Al reacts with, so plus, oxygen. Is oxygen just O? Is that elemental oxygen, or is it one of my Brinkelhoffs? Yeah, it's the O in Brinkelhoff, so it's O2, kiddos, not just O. To produce, now that's the same as to form, aluminum oxide. Now some of you folks are going to put ALO. Stop it. Come on. Learn how to write formulas. Aluminum is in group 13. It's 3 plus. Oxygen is in group 16. It's 2 negative. So what's the formula between aluminum and oxygen? Well, 3 plus and 2 negative doesn't that have 6 as a multiple. So Al2, that gives me 6 positives. O3, that gives me 6 negatives. Hey! Ta-da! I've written the formula. The equation's almost finished. I need to balance it now. So two aluminums, one aluminum, three oxygens. Two. Okay, let's do this. I'm going to put a two in front of Al2O3 to give me six oxygens. Okay, put a three in front of O2 to give me six oxygens, and a four in front of Al to give me four aluminums. That's balanced. Okay, now on 15, there's also a B and C. I've given you a pretty good shove. You guys should be well on your way. Once again, the key here, kiddos, on a lot of these is to be able to write formulas. And that's true for the rest of this chapter and also the next chapter. So go back and review those if you need to. Okay? Hope that helped you out. Hope you enjoyed it. And we'll see you in class soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>